Hello and welcome to the real streets of crime. Today we will be looking at Leon Johnson, a notorious gangster from Manchester. A Preston man described by a judge as a leading light in a gang of armed thugs has today been jailed for firearms offences. The judge at Manchester Crown Court directed that the custodial period for Leon Johnson of Anna Street, Preston, should be nine years and eight months. It comes after Lancashire police carried out a covert investigation into gun crime across Preston. Operation Decathlon was set up in February 2006 by officers from Lancashire Constabulary's Serious and Organised Crime Unit, SOCU, who targeted 30-year-old Leon Johnson. Johnson was a known member of Manchester's Young Gooch crew, who became a resident on Preston's Callan estate. On bank holiday Monday 29 May 2006, Johnson flew into Liverpool Airport and, together with others, drove into the middle of a Caribbean festival, which was taking place in Broadfield Park, Mossside. Within minutes a shooting occurred between rival gangs, including Johnson. Soku officers who witnessed the incident were able to provide vital evidence. After a joint investigation between Lancashire Constabulary and GMP, Johnson was arrested and charged with serious firearms offences. Johnson was found guilty of those offences after a 14-day trial in November, during which Soku officers from Lancashire Constabulary gave evidence. Superintendent Dave Bryan, from Lancashire Constabulary's Serious and Organised Crime Unit, said, this is an excellent result for the communities of Greater Manchester, but also for the people of Preston. The conviction of Johnson should serve as a warning that Lancashire Constabulary will pursue vigorously those who threaten our communities by carrying and using firearms. And summing up, Judge GQC said, Johnson was a danger to the public and it was quite clear in the evidence given that he was a leading figure of the young Gooch crew and a soldier loyal to this gang. He was a significant risk who would have carried out serious harm to other gang members and more importantly to our law-abiding members of the public. Johnson was also part of a drug gang who clashed at gunpoint in a busy hospital. The warring mob sent staff, patients and visitors fleeing in terror as they fought running battles in wards and along corridors. CCTV cameras caught the thugs, many masked in hoods, balaclavas and bandanas, storming the building as three gang members were being treated there. The louts eight of whom are now starting jail terms used hospital trolleys as battering rams to storm through war doors. They pulled weapons on one another including at least two guns and one hammer, jurors heard. But no shots were fired. Violence between Manchester's Gooch close gang and Longsight crew erupted as members were being cared for in different sections of the city's royal infirmary. The Longsight thug, 26, and a Gooch close rival, 19, had suffered gunshot wounds. Fellow Gooch close member Leon Johnson had been mown down in a hit-and-run attack. Each was being visited by relatives and friends when word spread that both drug mobs were in the hospital. Longsight crew thugs phoned cohorts for backup. Prosecutor Robert Elias said. The arrival of the second group caused panic among hospital staff and members of the public. Staff, patients and visitors fled for their lives. One medic told police. Lots of boys arrived from everywhere. They were on mountain bikes in the corridors. The gangs hunted each other down corridors and in wards, the X-ray department and the fracture clinic, Preston Crown Court heard. One youth later begged a police officer. Help, they're going to shoot me. Eight gang members admitted affray and two others admitted public order offenses after the April 2004 violence. Which close thug, Antonio Wint, 18, was yesterday given 20 months, Fabio Ricketts, 20, 30 months, and Faisal Assel, 19, 21 months for Afray. They also got five-year ASBOs. Warren Lang, 25, received 20 months, Tyrone Gilbert, 21, 20 months, Matthew McFarquhar, 18, 16 months, Rennie Dixon, 26, 26 months, and Mark Carroll, 20, 20 months. Leon Johnson, 27, and Bradley Holland, 18, 
admitted public order offenses. Johnson received three months jail but walked free because of time already served. Holland was given 100 hours community service. Judge Gilbert QC said they had turned the hospital into a battleground and added. This was a disgraceful scene. Johnson was also convicted of possessing a gun with intent to endanger life, and Johnson was ordered to serve at least three years ten days before he can be considered for release. Judge G told him he would only be freed when it was safe to do so. The second man, who cannot be identified for legal reason, will be sentenced later. The offense was committed against a background of gang warfare in Moss Side, near the center of this great city. Bangland rivalry or feuding between gangs involving the use of firearms cannot and will not be tolerated by any civilized society, and the courts must do all that is possible to deter such activity. That can only be done by the imposition of long sentences of custody. The good, decent, law-abiding residents of Moss Eyed and any other inner city area deserve to be protected from you and others like you who put loyalty to the gang and the gun above any regard for the law and the safety and well-being of innocent bystanders. In this case it was pure good fortune and nothing else that no member of the public was not at least seriously injured if not killed. Johnson, of Anna Street, Preston, was a senior figure in the Gooch Close gang and only returned to England from a family holiday in Turkey a few hours before the shootout. But police had bugged his car and listened as he met up with other gang members before driving in convoy with a BMW to Moss Side, where the fun day, which included music stalls, a bouncy castle and a merry-go-round, was just ending. But there were still about 300 people, including dozens of children, milling around the streets when the cars sped through safety barriers and shots were exchanged with two men who were on foot. The explosion of violence and people running in terror and one pregnant woman collapsed through fear and had to be taken to hospital, said Philip Kerr in prosecuting. During the incident police heard Johnson giving instructions and telling others to hide their faces with balaclavas. He also spoke about day banging, a slang for a daytime shooting, and had told two schoolboys aged about 14 that when they were older, he would show them how the hot boys do it. His two rivals one who was named in court as Tyrone Wong, a leading member of the Doddington gang who has since been jailed for life of the murder of Ernest Gifford. Johnson tried to hunt them down saying, man can't war with me, I've been hanging them shots, I ain't gonna fall. The gangster was arrested and was convicted after witnesses were allowed to give evidence anonymously using voice distortion equipment. Detective Inspector Chris Packer from Greater Manchester Police Armed Crime Unit said, these are extremely dangerous individuals who have demonstrated a willingness to carry weapons and also use them. Firing a gun during a crowded community event shows a blatant disregard for other people and their lives. Johnson and his accomplice could not care less about their community, and Moss Side is a safer place with these thugs locked up where they belong. Thankfully no one was seriously injured in either of these incidents, but it could have been much worse. We need to make sure that people who are capable of using weapons in this manner are taken off the streets so they are not able to hurt innocent people. The day's convictions show we will not rest until we remove this scourge of gun crime from our streets and we will relentlessly pursue those who think they can live by the gun until they are brought to justice. I would like to praise the courage of the witnesses who stood up for their community and came forward to assist the investigation. We have taken all possible action to make sure their identities are protected. The defendants in this case could not even tell the age or gender of those who gave evidence. No one in the community need ever know who they are. Thank you for joining me today, please don't forget to comment, like share, subscribe for more stories from the real streets of crime.